Hi, it's a beautiful day in Cota de Casa. I'm on the South Golf Course on the 18th tee box. And today we're going to talk about this fantastic plant. This is called Southern Cattail, also known as Slender Cattail, Narrow Leaf Cattail, Tool Cattail. In Australia, they call it Gumbungi, and its Latin name is Typha domagensis. We just call it a cattail. This is a native plant to Southern California. It can be found across the United States from the 42nd parallel, which is Northern California, all the way to Northern Pennsylvania. Now there's 15 different varieties of this plant in the United States. There's three in California, which all interbreed. So they're a bunch of hybrids. So you can't tell one from the other. And also, it's found worldwide in temperate and tropical regions. Now this plant, it grows along our Gobernadora Creek. It grows in freshwater marshes. Now the roots are un typically underwater. Their leaves and flowers are above water. And it's a tall, stiff, grass-like leaves with a hot dog on a stick. So let's talk a little bit more about this great plant. Now the roots are typically underwater or just in our case at the water line. They are spread by rhizomes, which are underground stems, which shoot out laterally. So just one or two plants can form a rather dense colony like we have here. Now all the plants are unisexual with the male part of the flower has the pollen, which is on top of this hot dog shape. And the female, this is the flowers of this plant. Under the bridge at Cantamar, we have another selection of southern cattail. And you notice here, these roots are submerged in the creek. It's a better view. All right, here's the stream at hole 13. Beautiful. Here is the male part of the plant, which is on top, and this holds all of the pollen. And you see how it's very yellow. It's all the pollen being released from this plant. Now this yellow pollen is also used as a dye, and the Native Americans, they used it as um, like face painting. Yellow pollen. Down here, this is the female part. Now it's um, petalless, but this structure, this hot dog, is made up of thousands and thousands of small flowers. Now eventually the female part of the plant, the hot dog here, it'll open up and release this material inside called fluff. And the fluff is full of seeds and this one unit here can contain up to about 250,000 different seeds that will simply blow away in the wind. Now, you can eat this if you want. I would not eat it raw, otherwise you would choke on the fluff. But you can cook it over a very hot flame, like a hot dog on a stick, at one of your campsites. So there's a complete ecosystem that lives among these plants. It's a home for tiny invertebrates, then the fish who eat them, and the birds that eat both the invertebrates and the fish. It provides a great shelter and nesting for tiny marsh wrens, red-winged blackbirds, ducks, coots, and small animals. Now, it also helps prevent erosion of the banks of ponds by slowing down the rain and the runoff. Now, can you eat this plant? Well, every part of the cattail is edible. Don't mistake it for the poison iris, which looks very much the same. Always ensure that the one you eat has this hot dog on the top. Now you can grill it, bake it, or boil it, the roots, until they're tender. Now once they're cooked, it's like eating leaves of an artichoke. You just strip away the fibers with your teeth and you leave the outer shell. And the hot dog, well you can eat this too, but you gotta make sure you cook it over a nice flame and get rid of all the fluffiness inside, otherwise you'll choke. The cattail is very important to Native Americans who use the young shoots for food or flour, the leaves for thatch, and the seed fluff. They mixed it with tallow to make gum. And they used the pollen, as I mentioned, as face paint. In southern Iraq, 
the pollen is used to make a dessert called curate. Now the extracts can help heal wounds. For medicinal purposes, it has antioxidant capabilities and topical ointments. It's very effective at reducing bacterial contamination in the water for agricultural use. And now the fluff can be used to stuff toy animals. In World War II, it was used to stuff life jackets. Well, that is our southern cattail. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see you soon. Have a great day. Bye.